What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, we're going to go over three hot EV stocks that you may want to consider buying right now while they're still on sale. So I'm going to cover three stocks and I'm also going to go over some of the pros and cons of investing in each of these stocks. But before we actually get into the video, for those of you who are new here, my name is Evan and I make videos showing you guys different ways to make money in the stock market. So if that interests you guys, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss when I upload. Also, if you guys wouldn't mind going down and hitting the like button, I would really appreciate it. And it lets me know that you guys enjoy these video updates every day. But now jumping into the list of stocks that you guys came here for, first, it's important to realize that there's a lot of factors and a lot of different things affecting affecting the EV space. And this entire industry is really being affected. It's not specific to just a couple EV stocks and we're seeing the entire market pull back. And I also wanna mention that the stock market as a whole is not crashing. And just to show you guys, if we actually take a look at SPY, they're actually trading at $385. Now, if you guys aren't aware of SPY or some people call it Spider, it pretty much gives you an idea of how the overall market is moving. And today it's actually green and they're actually up about half a percent. Now, if we do look at the one month chart, they're actually down right over 1%. But a crash is when the market or a specific industry pulls back about 20% or more in a short period. And when we actually look at the one year chart, Chart, you can see that they're still up a significant amount and they've actually had greater pullbacks than right now multiple times in the past year. Even in September and October, there wasn't many talks about a market crash happening, yet those were bigger pullbacks than we're seeing right now. So I just kind of want to clear up that misconception that people think the entire market is crashing. Now this isn't to say that the market can't crash or that it's not bound to happen at some point, but as of right now, we're not seeing any major pullbacks in the overall market. This is mostly specific to the technology and electric vehicle industry, so it's really not affecting a lot of industries. It's specific to just a few that have maybe been hyperinflated in the last year. But now jumping into the list of the top three EV stocks to buy right now, and the number one is actually Tesla, and I'm sure you guys saw this coming, but Tesla in the last month is actually down 32%, and it's just been this constant downwards trend, and they've been red pretty much all month. Now there's been a couple green days, but you can see for the most part, Tesla's just pretty much dropped down and they're dropping down to points where they were about six months ago or so. And I know a lot of people really do believe in Tesla and Tesla is kind of the leader in the EV industry. And they really do set the benchmark when it comes to other EV stocks and how those smaller EV stocks move. So you could say that this big pullback we're seeing in the EV industry is mostly due to Tesla since they do pave the way for these smaller stocks. But just like any other stock, if you believe in Tesla long term, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do, since I know a lot of you guys watch my NEO videos, and if you guys are investing in NEO, I'm sure a lot of you guys are also investing in Tesla. And obviously this is more of a long-term play. And so when we see these pullbacks of 20 to 30% in a single month, at least in my opinion, that's a really good time to load up, especially if you've been dollar cost averaging and you've been meaning to buy more shares. Right now might not be a bad opportunity. And with that said, Tesla still remains on track to beat their past implied delivery numbers. And this currently sits at about 1.7 million in 2023. And it's estimated to be about 4 million by 2025. And it's also possible that production could rise to about 2 million by 2023. And that would definitely give a lot of cushion to their delivery and the ability to rapidly scale production after completion is really going to cement their forward delivery growth and that's when we're going to see these multi-million delivery years and where Tesla is setting record deliveries and really competing with top auto manufacturers that historically have only produced combustion engines. I think we all can agree that growth in deliveries is really the key to driving both revenue and market share higher and there was also some glimpses of market share trouble last year in China and Europe as normal combustion engine manufacturers ramped up numbers and we saw the Chinese market and the consumers over there really start to embrace smaller electric vehicle companies or micro EVs if you want to call them that. But with plans to deliver millions of vehicles in just a few years time, Tesla could be able to reach 1.5% global market share in China. And then hopefully by 2023, it would be over 1% in Europe. And they could also see their revenue jump to 68 billion by 2022. And then again, doubling by 2025 to 125 billion. 
And then at that point, they would be able to capture about 2.5% of the global market share in China. And unlike a lot of other markets, like the European market, for example, China represents a huge market opportunity for electric vehicles, and it's also rapidly expanding. There's growth forecasts that 1.8 million vehicles for 2021 are going to happen from Tesla. And then you also have to consider the demand and the government support for electric vehicles in China. And this is really going to boost EV sales, and they're going to rise much quicker than anticipated, and they could hit over 3 million by 2022. Now, of course, there's also downsides to investing in Tesla, and there are some risks you're going to take on if you're investing in Tesla. And one of those, of course, is the valuation and people constantly arguing if Tesla should have a valuation that they're always trading for. And so if you're investing in Tesla, valuation is definitely a double-edged sword and the constant chatter of persistent overvaluation relative to every metric out there saying that they're overvalued, it definitely seems to have a big impact on Tesla because once Tesla starts moving in one direction, they really can gain a lot of momentum. Now, typically we see Tesla going up and it's constantly bullish news coming out and there's definitely a lot of bullish people on Tesla. But at one point, Tesla wasn't one of the most shorted stocks for no reason. There's definitely a lot of bearish people on Tesla as well. And I think we're starting to see those people really take over and they're getting in the minds of normal investors who were maybe bullish on Tesla previously. And now these people are starting to reconsider. And then you also wanna watch out for increased competition. Now at the current rate EVs are being produced, I don't think this is really any trouble for Tesla. We know Tesla really leads the way and they also have the most deliveries compared to any other electric vehicle company out there. But there's definitely potential threats in the future and different companies that could overtake Tesla. Now I'm not saying this is guaranteed to happen or that it's going to happen anytime soon, but it is a risk that you are taking on by investing in Tesla. Because if another company overtakes Tesla, we probably won't see the crazy growth we've seen in the past. Now of course we can't go over EV stocks without going over NEO and I know a lot of you guys are very bullish on NEO but NEO in the last month is actually down 40 percent. Now I know a lot of you guys are very long term on NEO and I know you believe in them but I'm sure a lot of you guys are also starting to question whether this is a good investment especially if you guys bought in at 60 or 65 dollars and you've basically seen your portfolio drop in half. Well like I've said before you shouldn't be investing in NEO for the short term. If you guys think NEO is going to 10 and 20x at some point in the future, these pullbacks like this is really just the time to add more shares and bring down your average share cost. Now, the reason why I think NEO is actually a good buy right now is because they have a lot of catalysts in the future. And I'm not talking about super long term, like years in the future. I mean, at some point this year, there's multiple catalysts that realistically should push up NEO share price. Now we know that they just released their earnings for 2020 and it wasn't very spectacular. It didn't really meet forecasted predictions, but you could definitely look at that as a positive thing, seeing as though NEO is pulling back so much. Now, of course, a lot of it is due to Tesla because Tesla really influences these smaller stocks, like I mentioned. But with this constant fear around electric vehicles in the entire industry that they've all been in a bubble and that they were going to pop at some point, I don't think it really came as a surprise to too many people. And so when you do see these stocks pull back down, that is a great time to buy more shares. But this is only if you guys believe in these stocks long term. I'm not telling you to buy NEO or Tesla or any other electric vehicle stock if you don't believe in them long term and you don't have a long term outlook on them. But like I mentioned, there's a couple of catalysts to watch for with NEO, and one of those big things is going to be their deliveries by the end of this year. Now, if you guys have watched NEO closely, you probably are aware that they actually increased delivery capacity to 10,000 vehicles in January. Then due to chip shortages and battery shortages, it actually got brought back down to 7,500 in February. But that's one of those things driving NEO share price down and the entire EV industry. So once these chip shortages and these battery constraints are no longer here, we're going to see these stocks recover and they're probably going to shoot way past what they're trading for right now. And they're more than likely going to even surpass their all-time highs in the next year. Now this is assuming that there's no constraints and no restrictions on on batteries and chips, but there's an estimated forecast that NEO is going to deliver about 95,000 to 105,000 units by the end of this year. And the demand is definitely very strong for NEO over in China. And another big catalyst to look forward to is the European expansion for NEO. There's already developments underway there, and they're planning to expand to Europe in the second half of 2021. 
Now, of course, there's not only upsides to investing in NEO. There's also some risks and some downsides included. And again, one of those big things, just like Tesla, is the competition that they have to deal with. Now, this is especially exaggerated when they expand to Europe because Europe actually has a very widespread electric vehicle adoption. And there's a lot of electric vehicle companies already operating in Europe. And then of course the chip shortage, we don't know exactly how long this could last and when things are going to be fully operational again. So that's definitely more of a short-term risk, but it's a risk nonetheless. And it really might prevent a lot of people from investing in NEO right now, even though the price for NEO is extremely attractive right now. Now, the last company I wanted to touch on is actually Xpeng. And I think Xpeng right now is actually a good buy. And their shares have actually slipped about 40% since February, much like NEO and much like Tesla. So why I actually think Xpeng is a good buy right now is because even though their deliveries were down for February and they had about a 60% month over month decline all the way down to 2,200 units, they should actually be able to reach about 12,500 units for quarter one. And this would leave them on track to hit 57,000 units under strong seasonality and production run rates, returning to their normal production capacity. Now this is a slight decline from the prior 65,000 unit projection, but with chip shortages coming in, of course this is going to affect all these EV companies. But with that said, revenue is also poised to hit about $2 billion, rising up to $4.5 billion in 2020. And this is also supported by capacity expansion, which could potentially increase their max run rate to 100000 annually. And unlike NEO, Xpeng has actually expanded outside of China, and as of December, they had already expanded to Norway. So Xpeng has already been exposed to the outside market outside of China, and they have a bit more experience, and that's another reason why I think they're a good buy. They're not solely relying on China. That's not to say that China is not a huge market because they are. We know that China is the biggest auto manufacturing market in the world, but the ability to expand early could really potentially give Xpeng a leg up in the future when they want to expand even more and really expand globally. And of course, there are risks to be aware of when investing in Xpeng. And a few of those big things include a recent recall of their G3. And this actually recalled over 13,000 units and it was actually due to their inverter and it caused a loss of power and posed a big safety risk for a lot of customers. And this could have been one of the things that served as a contributing factor for their weak February deliveries. But you also want to consider their margins through quarter three, which were actually in the low single digits. And when you compare this to Neo, who actually posted a mid-teen vehicle margin, it doesn't quite look as good for Xpeng, but they actually increased their margins to the high teens through quarter four. But Xpeng just isn't quite as developed as Neo, and especially not as Tesla, but they have expanded outside of the country. So there's definitely some give and take, and it's definitely up to you as an investor if this is a company that you want to invest in. And that goes without saying that each one of these companies is a company that you should solely do your own research on and decide for yourself if it's a company that you believe in long term. Because if there's another pullback like we're seeing right now, and you could say that there is a market crash right now in the EV industry, if another one of these happens, are you going to be able to hold on and actually weather the storm and come out in the end with more shares and a bigger position than you started with? I think that's what it all comes down to because you wanna be adding shares on red days. You don't wanna buy on the highest days and then the stock pulls back. But of course, I'm not a financial advisor, but I think that's pretty common sense that you don't wanna buy on green days and have have a stock pull back, you want to buy on those red days. And we're definitely seeing a lot of red days for the EV industry. And so there's a lot of justification to buy in right now and really hold long term. But for those of you who made it this far into the video, I want to hear what you guys think down in the comments about each one of these stocks and which one's actually your favorite. I assume most of you guys are invested in NEO, but let me know if you guys are invested in all three of these companies and specifically which one's actually your favorite and which one you have the longest term mindset on. And if you guys haven't signed up for Weeble, make sure you guys sign up using the link in the description. And when you sign up and deposit $100, you'll actually get two free stocks just for signing up and depositing money. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like because it really does help out the channel. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you back here in the next one. Bye.